everybody. Hallelujah. Give God praise. We're so grateful. This is the day the Lord has made and our hearts are rejoicing and we're so glad in all that God has done for us. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Why is that such a special day? I'm so glad you asked that question. That's the day that the Holy Ghost fell. Hallelujah. It fell and the Spirit of God fell like cloven tongues as a fire and folks spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm so grateful on today for the Holy Ghost because he lives in me and I hope he lives in you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to open up with a prayer and then praise and worship and then I'll pass it over to Pastor Fenn. Father, I ask that you would bless these services in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you get glory out of every aspect of the service. Lord God, I pray that someone that attends on today would receive your precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, I pray that you would anoint every aspect. I pray that you would anoint the worship, anoint the word, give Pastor Fent clarity of thought, clarity of speech as he delivers the word to your people. God, I ask that you would open our hearts and our minds that we may receive your word, that we may receive your power on today. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. With this song, we are going to ask God to let his spirit rise within us. Hallelujah. His spirit causes our feet to dance. His spirit causes our heart to rejoice. His spirit causes our mouths to sing out his praises. Hallelujah. Lord, let your spirit rise. Living water 
prayers. Hallelujah. Please anointing. Fill this temple. Let your presence, O oh Lord, reign in me. Reign in me. your prayer on today. I ask if that's your prayer on today, that you would just allow the anointing, hallelujah, to flow as you ask God to reign in your life. Holy Spirit, overflow from my belly shall flow living waters. Please, anointing, fill this temple, let your presence, O oh Lord, reign in me, hallelujah, reign in me. Sound Word Worship God. Center. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Thank you, Jesus. And all the time, God is good. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we just praise you and thank you for being Hallelujah. here today. I thank my wife oh, again for her worship Jesus. and leading us in worship today. I just praise God because I have a beautiful wife that has a beautiful spirit you, and that God has blessed her with a beautiful voice. Thank you, and I Jesus. thank God for her. I thank God for the spirit that is in this house. 
And I pray God ushers in the spirit in your home. You, Today, um, we're going to study the word and we're going to go into the word and I'm going to minister today from my heart and from the spirit of God. We know today is Pentecost and I thank God for Pentecost because we understand that it is the day when the spirit of God fell and filled the disciples. It filled the 120 that were up in the room and it fell on every man. And those that were listening were able to hear what was going on. Thanks. Some were confused, but others marveled. And so what we ask for today is that we want the spirit to fall. Thank you, Jesus. The world needs the spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. And today, because of all the turmoil and all of the hatred and all of the feelings and emotions that we're going on today in our lives, we need the spirit to rise. We need the spirit to take control. We need the spirit to reign. So we need the Lord reign, Jesus reign. So before I go into this, Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and praise you and magnify your name. You. We want your spirit to oh, reign. Jesus. Lord God, let your spirit rise. Let it rise within me. Yes, let it God. rise, Lord yes, God, yes, till my feet and my limbs are under its control. Yes, let it rise, Lord God, until yes. my mouth and my mind are under yes, its yes. control. God, I thank right. you, Lord God, Hallelujah. that my heart is now under the control of the spirit. God, we praise you, Lord God, that when you take control, when I open my mouth, my heart speaks of rejoicing. My heart speaks of gladness. My heart speaks of your joy. God, we thank you because you are a great God and you are worthy to be praised. God bless today. Bless your people, Lord God. Bless your believers, Lord God. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice yes, to hear from you. Yes, Father. We want your spirit, Lord God, to fall, to encamp, to cover, Lord God. Yes, Change their speech, Lord God, Amen. by your spirit. Yes, God, I praise you and I thank you for you using me. Help me to step back and you step forward, Lord God. I want it to be all of you and none of me. Thank you, Jesus. God, use my mind. Use my lips, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Change my heart. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I thank God because I believe God to be in control. Thank you, Jesus. And God is a God that is going to be in control and, in, and will stay in control. I thank God for the, the music that went forth today because under the music and under the leading of the Holy Ghost, uh, the songs that my wife sang were very paramount thank for you, today. Jesus. We need the spirit of God to rise. Yes. And we need Jesus to reign. And so we know because of the news, we know because of the heartache and the deaths that are happening in the news and in our country, we know that it's not a law thing, it's a heart thing. And we thank God that it's the Holy Ghost that failed, that was put the law not just on paper, not just on stone, but it put the law in our hearts. It's not until the law gets into our hearts that there's going to be a change. You, and so the spirit fell that everybody could be filled with the spirit of God. Thank the spirit of God came to say, I'm going to put my word in your heart. Because when I wrote it on tablets, y'all didn't pay, it attention, pay attention to it. Y'all changed it and tried to make it fit your agenda. Y'all took the law and y'all made it what you want it to be. You took the law and you made it serve your purpose. You took the law and you tried to discard part of it. But God said, now I'm going to write my law in your heart. Mm -hmm. And when it's in your heart, it's going to change your mind. It should change your attitude. It should change your emotional state. The spirit of God should take control. So we're going to read today in Acts chapter 2. And I just want to read several verses. Starting at verse 1, just follow along with me if you would. Because this is Pentecost Sunday, right? And we have to remember that during Pentecost, this was a festival. This was a time of rejoicing. This was a time to be glad God had ordained this festival thousands of years prior to this day. And we understand through teaching that this festival was started um, to usher in the tabernacle and the usher in the spirit of God 
and the law given to Moses. And so Pentecost didn't just start in Acts. Pentecost started years ago in the Old Testament. But the Spirit of God changed hearts. And so we need to be ready and able and willing to, to understand what God's purpose is in our lives. And don't let that purpose be distracted. And so Acts 2, verses 1, and we're going to read just several verses. Um, with the help of the Lord, I'll stop reading when God tells me to stop reading. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, everybody say fully come. Fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Somebody say a sound. A sound. From heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, everybody say noised abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? If you would skip down to verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. God bless the reading of his word because we believe his word is already blessed. So today, if I were to have a topic during this season of pandemic and during this season of unrest and hate and, and discourse and killings and everything going on, my topic would be, what to do when you live in the already and the not yet? Where we are is already happening. Where we are is the already. We're living in a day and age where hatred, racism, retaliation is gearing up people to do things that are not like Christ. Mm -hmm. We're getting people in a state of unrest. Now, we could blame this on whomever we want to blame it on, but I want to focus us that the devil is still active, mm -hmm. and the devil's purpose is still to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came that we may have life, life mm -hmm. and that more abundantly. I ministered a word weeks ago about how we need to let God out. And sometimes God shows when we're in the hottest fire. And I know now sometimes people are thinking that we are in the fire. As a race of people, we can imagine and think that what is going on with where we are already? How do I move in my existence already? This has been happening to us long enough. Why is this happening to us so long? And God is asking and answering the question, what do we do and how do we live in the already and the not yet? And God is saying, according to Philippians 3.10, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Sometimes we are in the fire to know God. Sometimes we're placed in turmoil to know God. This is Pentecost. And Pentecost is the falling of the Spirit upon man. And we need to get away from just having a form of who God is and move in the power of who God is. 
I, I am really trying to, to minister the word because we need to be a race and a people that move according to the will and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We cannot let our emotional state get the best of us. In this day, when the spirit fell on the disciples, the context is they were told by Jesus Christ to go wait to go wait for this power that is going to come. They didn't know what this power was, but they were told by Christ to go wait. Keep in mind that prior to this, they had been witnessed to the beating of Jesus Christ. They had been witnessed to the dragging of their Lord and Savior. They had been witnessed to the hanging, not the hanging, but the crucifying of Jesus Christ. They witnessed all that. This was their Lord and Savior. This was their family member. This was their leader, their minister, their Lord and King. They witnessed this. How many of us have been in position to where we've witnessed family being mistreated? How many of us have been in position to where we've witnessed the state of affairs in the world today mistreat people? Don't be like the parable where God spoke about the man who was beaten on the side of the road and everybody passed him except for the Samaritan. We don't want to turn a blind eye to what is going on. As a race and as a minister of God, I want to speak out against injustice. But when I speak out against injustice, it is not to get you and those under the sound of my voice to respond to the injustice physically. We need to have a spiritual response. Yes, marching is good. Yes, rallying is good. Yes, meeting and talking about circumstances is good. But at the forefront, it needs to be the spirit of God. The mind of Christ needs to take control. We need to have the spirit of God move in our lives. We need to know that even in fire... God is obligated. Even in fire, God is obligated. When the three Hebrew boys were cast into the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar recognized, I threw in three, but I see four standing there. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Don't be misled. Satan is trying to throw us all in the fire. His job is to see us all destroyed be before we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ, in the midst of fire, shows up. In the midst of our turmoil and in the midst of our crisis, Jesus Christ will show up. Don't think that God does not know what is going on. Like the children of Israel. They were captives in Egypt. And the Bible says that Jesus heard their cry and he answered by sending Moses. And I want you to understand that Jesus' response was through covenant with his people. He didn't just respond by getting them out. He responded by being in covenant. Now, our response while we're living in the already and the not yet is to respond in covenant obedience. Adam, don't eat of the tree. He was disobedient to the voice of God and listened to the voice of the serpent. Noah, build the ark. Noah was obedient in building the ark, but those that around him mocked him and didn't get in. Abraham, leave your family and go to a place where I have called you. He left because he was obedient and devoted to Jesus Christ. Moses, go to Egypt. Bring my people out. Moses, through his obedience, understood that, God, I don't speak well. I can't say what I want to say well. I need help. What do I say? And God's response was, tell them I am that I am has sent you. We need to know that covenant is coupled with obedience. And it's obedience 
to God that we need to listen to. In Acts chapter 2, we read in verse 2 that there was a sound that came from heaven. I want to admonish you all to be careful of who you're listening to. Be careful of what sound you hear. Be careful of who's whispering in your ear. Be careful of what your own mind is telling you what to do. Be careful. Be careful and listen to the sound only from heaven. If it doesn't sound like the sound of heaven, don't listen to it. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, don't listen to it. It has to be founded in the word. And we need to be able to understand that God's sheep know his voice. And the spirit of God fell on Pentecost upon his sheep. And we know that through this text and through the Bible, that 3,000 were added to the church. The disciples went through turmoil just like we are. They witnessed the betrayal. They witnessed the beating. They witnessed Christ's death. But I want you to understand, they also witnessed his resurrection. And we need to stay patient with God and stay in a position to where we witness his resurrection. The Bible speaks that after he rose from the dead, 40 days he communed with God the world. He sat with his disciples. He taught his disciples. He even performed miracles. He walked up upon two disciples and they were fishing. And God was hungry at the time. And he asked them, do you have anything for me to eat? And the disciples said, we haven't caught anything. There's nothing in the net. And the Lord began to tell them, throw the net on the right side. And they threw the net on the right side. And what happened? The nets were filled with fish. Then there was a disciple that jumped out of the boat and recognized who Jesus was. And he swam to the shore to meet Jesus. How many of us are eager to run to Jesus instead of eager, showing our eagerness to run to disappointment? I am convinced that it is the spirit of God that is going to bring restoration and bring this world back into the kingdom establishment that God has ordained. It is the spirit of God that we need. It is the Holy Ghost. This is Pentecost. Like I said at the start, this is not just a law issue. It's a heart issue. And in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 16, the Bible says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. We are in a time where we need to know who God is. And we need to understand that we need the word of God and the spirit of God in our hearts and in our minds. We can't react emotionally, but we have to move according to the Spirit of God. The day of Pentecost happened, and this day is when God said, no longer am I going to write the law on stone, but I'm going to write the law in man's heart. And the people who were in the area began to gather because things were being noised. They began to gather because they heard a commotion. The context is they were already there. And the Bible says that when they began to speak in tongues, those in the upper room, that the commotion was heard even down on the streets. And we need to understand that what we need to do is cause a commotion. But our commotion is not physical. Our commotion is spiritual. And when we have a spiritual commotion, there needs to be a sound like a mighty wind. There needs to be a sound of speaking in tongues. There needs to be a sound of prayer. 
There needs to be a sound of deliverance. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a sound of justice. Yes. There needs to be a sound of the coming king. There needs to be a sound of restoration. Mm -hmm. And we need to establish that sound as the children of God. And when we establish that sound and we cause that spiritual commotion, then those in the streets, those that we walk by, those that are oppressed, those that are causing the oppression will gather because of the commotion. And we pray that the spirit of God will cause men to speak the word of God. And it was when Peter stood and spoke the word of God, the word of God corrected their thinking. They thought they're drunk. The world thought these people don't know what they're doing. The world thought they're so confused. Many of us have seen drunk people. I myself have seen a lot of drunk people. I've witnessed drunkenness um, growing up. And I want you to understand that it is not a pleasant sight to see. It is not a pleasant sight to see when somebody doesn't know where they are. It is not a pleasant sight to see when they don't realize who they are and whose presence they're in. It's not a pleasant sight to see when they forget their things that they had on them. It's not a pleasant sight to see to be able to see somebody stagger and stumble all over themselves. But Peter corrected that understanding because he said, they're not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. We're doing a festival. <clears throat> We're worshiping. We're praising God. We don't drink at this time of the day. We're not drunk like you think we are, but this is that new wine that you're talking about. This is that new wine, that spiritual anointing that we're showing. This is not the liquid. This is the spirit. This is the spirit that's causing a newness to fall upon the world. This is the spirit of God that's causing me to stagger. I'm going to tell you this. When I stagger, God stands straight. When I don't know what to do, the anointing tells me and shows me how to move. In my weakness, God's power is made strong. God, allow me to stagger under your anointing and let your anointing rule. God, I wish that the church would take your new wine and stagger under the anointing because the weight of your glory is so heavy. But we don't want to allow the weight of glory to sit on us. The Bible says the anointing sat upon everyone. We don't want to be constrained. We don't want to be controlled. We don't want to be obedient. But the spirit is looking for obedience. And I understand that it's difficult when I am supposed to be taken care of by those in charge. It's difficult when I am supposed to be loved by those in charge. It's difficult when they betray me. It's difficult when they beat me. It's difficult when they kill me. But we have to acknowledge Pentecost because it is the spirit that wants us to be under his control. We can't respond emotionally. We have to put the word of God in our hearts so that when we stand, we speak and correct the issue. Peter stood and under the authority of the anointing. Peter stood and under the authority of the anointing corrected their disbelief. That's what you do in the already and the not yet. What do we do? Because we're living in the here and now. 
I can be reminded of Rebecca in the story. She had lost her husband and she went with her mother-in-law back to her mother-in-law's homeland. And she made a decision that where you go, I'm going to go. Where you lay your head down, I'm going to lay my head down. The God you serve, I'm going to serve. And Rebecca, through her obedience, went to where her mother lived. And during this time, she began to work in the fields of Boaz. And when she worked in the fields of Boaz, this was during the time of harvest. This is all tied together because if you were with me through our study, these are festival times. These are times when grain is harvested, barley, wheat, the first fruits are harvested. And God said in his word that if you own land and the land belongs to you, don't harvest everything. Don't take it all. Leave some for the less for fortunate. At this time, Rebecca was less fortunate. And so she began to glean. Excuse me. Ruth was less, less fortunate. Ruth said, I need to go glean from Boaz. And she was recognized by Boaz. And we need to understand that we need to be recognized by the spirit through obedience. Our obedience is what causes the spirit to recognize who we are. Ruth began to glean. Boaz recognized. And the term we use today is kinsman redeemer. And the spirit of God is our kinsman redeemer. God wants us to do what we need to do here and now. We need to work even in the midst of the already occurred and our not yet. Our not yet is coming and we need to be prepared for when the not yet gets here. We need to know who God is. And when we recognize who God is, we acknowledge who he is. God is not a God that is half the way. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 that when the Spirit of God had fully come, the Spirit of God fully came. I don't know about you, but when I get a glass of juice, I usually ask for a big glass. I don't want a small glass. Usually when I ask for a cup of coffee, I don't like the little itty bitty cups. I like the big cups. Give me a full cup. Um, if I want a piece of cake, give me a big piece of cake. I like the icing in the cake and I like it all. If I want a piece of pie, I want a full piece of pie. Don't give me a small piece of pie. Now, don't judge me. I am healthy. And maybe I don't need the full cup of coffee. Maybe I don't need the full piece of pie. Maybe I don't need a full piece of cake. But what I do need is the full anointing. What I do need is for the spirit to fully come. And when you're filled with the spirit, God wants you to know who he is. God is still a God of the here and now. God is a God of Pentecost the fully come spirit. We need to be filled. God is not a God of half full, but a God of more than enough. God wants us to exist and live in the already and the not yet. What are we doing in the here and now? We have to acknowledge who God is. And when we acknowledge who God is, we recognize who God is in the here and now. When we're disappointed, when we're betrayed, when things have happened in our lives and in our communities that we're distraught and we want to fire back, I say think on the things of God. We need to think about the creator 
who is God, the one who is sovereign, the God, the one El Elyon, the most high God. We need to speak of El Shaddai, the God almighty. We need to speak of Je the Jehovah God, the Lord, the name of God. We need to speak of the I am God, the personal God of covenant. We need to speak of Jehovah Elohim, the Lord God, the God who created covenant and fellowship. We need to speak of God Adonai, the God who is still sovereign in this circumstance. We need to speak of God Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide a way out. We need to speak of God Rofi. We need to speak of God who heals. We need to speak of God Nisi, Jehovah Nisi, who is our banner. And we need to hold the bloodstained banner of God because his banner over us is love. God is the conqueror. God is the victor. But this is a holy warfare. And we're in a fight. This is a holy warfare. And we're in a fight. When I thought about the banner of the Lord, I think about the flag that we see on statues. I've seen it because I work for the government. And I've seen this flag where they have the soldiers hoisting the American flag up in the ground. And that flag is a banner and a symbol of freedom. And I know right now that there's not a lot of feeling of freedom in the world today. There's not a lot of freedom because of pandemic. There's not a lot of freedom because of what the world is doing to ethnic races and our black races and those of color and I know we don't feel like we're free, but I want to tell you, that's not the banner we're under. Thank you, Jesus. We're under the banner of the Lord. You, we're under the banner of Jehovah Nissi. We're under a different banner. We are not of the world, but we are in the world. And better yet, we're sent into the world. What banner are you going to carry when you're met with obstacles? What banner are we going to hold and uplift when we're killed and destroyed? What banner do we hold in the face of an enemy? I tell you, it's the banner of Jehovah Nissi. It is the God, our banner. We need to remember God and acknowledge God as Jehovah Kadesh, because he is still holy. Our God is still holy. Don't go out and do something unholy. Allow the spirit of God to rule. God is Jehovah Shalom. He is still our peace. He is so much peace that he feels the deepest need of human hearts. Again, it is not a law issue. It is a heart issue. I don't care what you dress up in. I don't care what shield you have. If your heart is not right, what you put on the outside only magnifies what's on the inside. And if you don't put what's on the inside in right respect to Jesus Christ, what you do on the outside will only magnify what's on the inside. The Bible says, out of the heart flow the issues. We need not let what's in our heart be negative issues. We need to know that when we have issues, we need to run to the hem. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she ran to touch the hem. We have an issue of our blood. Our hearts are pumping the wrong kind of blood. Our hearts are pumping in this world the wrong kind of blood. And we need a blood transfusion. And it's when the Spirit of God fell and entered the heart of man, he gave man a heart transfusion. And we have to allow ourselves to go under the blade 
of the word of God that is careful and sharp and knows how to divide and separate things that are not like Christ. When we allow Jesus to move and we allow the spirit of God to take hold and to take effect, he allows our blood to line up with his. There is only one blood that can clean. There is only one blood that can sanctify. There is only one blood that needs to be pumped that is going to bring us to salvation. And that blood is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the blood of our risen Savior. And when he died on the cross and shed his blood, his blood didn't just take care of then. It's not just going to take care of tomorrow, but it's going to take care of us today. What do you do in between the already and the not yet? We allow the blood to take care of us here and now. We have to know that we serve a righteous God. We have to know that we serve a God that is full of justice and mercy and grace. When the disciples were in the upper room and they, they, they were filled with the spirit of God, they knew they were filled with power and authority under the name of Jesus Christ. That power was for them to maintain the gospel. That power was to sustain them through the turmoil, the heartache, the suffering that they would have to endure. The, the world didn't stop wanting to get rid of this knowledge of Jesus after he died. The world didn't want Jesus and his followers to continue. They still wanted them to be quiet. But the Holy Ghost came to maintain the good news we have to remember that during these times, we have to maintain the good news. And we're not going to be able to do that in and of ourselves. We have to allow the Spirit of God to empower us to move in this world. We have to use wisdom. We have to use understanding. I know we're hurting but this is Pentecost. This is still a day of rejoicing because you do have power to combat the devil. You do have power to make the devil flee. You do have power to cause the enemy to cease. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. One last Jehovah, the Jehovah that answers the question of what to do between the already happened and the not yet. And that's Jehovah Shammah. That Jehovah is the Jehovah ever present. That's the Jehovah that says peace will come and peace is here and not depending on circumstances. Jesus will usher in a peace that no matter what your circumstances are, mm -hmm. your peace is not depending on what goes on outside. Mm -hmm. Your peace is depending on what goes on inside. This is Jehovah Shama, Jehovah God who is ever present. This is the God that promised the anointing, that promised the spirit of God. This is the Jehovah that promised security, that promised protection, that promised fellowship. Relax and rejoice in the Jehovah Shama. Because despite what we see on the outside, God is still here. Mm -hmm. What do we do in the already and the not yet? We live in the here and now. Rejoice in Pentecost and recognize that the Spirit of God is here and now. And what we need to do 
and how we need to move is according to the Spirit. We need to rest assured that God still loves us. The hope that we have is in Jesus. Please don't put your hope in man, because as we're seeing, man will fail you, especially if he does not have a heart after God. If the Spirit of God is not written in his heart, he does not have the authority nor the power to correct his actions. They need the Spirit of God to rule. As a believer and a blood-washed saint of the Lord Jesus Christ, allow the Holy Ghost to write on your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't move if the Holy Ghost don't say move. But like Peter, there will come a time when you need to stand up and correct the mockers. There will come a time when you need to rise up and correct those that don't understand. But when you do so, you will speak in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. I pray that you receive the word from the Lord today. And I bless and I pray that it edifies you and lets you know that God is still here and God is still in control. And during Pentecost, we're going to celebrate during this festival. I'm going to turn it over right now to my wife and have her come and close. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Give God praise for the word. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful, as I said at the beginning of the service, that the Holy Ghost fell. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful that the Holy Ghost lives inside of me. Hallelujah. Something that um, Pastor Fant talked about a bit is the fact that we're hurting. The world is hurting today. The world has been hurting because of the sin problem that's in the world. But the world is hurting even more deeply because of what we see as a result of the sin problem and the racism and the hatred that's going on around us today. And so I heard a question asked. I was watching a church service uh, this morning before our service started. And the question was asked, how do I hurt as a believer and still honor God? How do I hurt as a believer and still keep my heart right? And the number one thing that can help you in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your hurting, is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the number one thing that can help you to get through that hurt that you're experiencing, that can help you to cope with the anger and the ugly that we see in the world today. God is knocking on the hearts of men. God may be knocking on some hearts of individuals that are listening to us today. And I would ask you, what are you going to do with God knocking on your heart? Are you going to answer? Are you going to allow him to come into your life and to transform you? Are you going to allow him to come into your life and equip you to be able to handle and deal with the challenges that we're facing today? Just because you have the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you're not gonna hurt doesn't mean that you're not going to experience pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he's a comforter. He's a keeper. Hallelujah. He'll give you peace in the middle of a storm. I would encourage you to answer the knock of the Holy Spirit on your heart on today in the name of Jesus. I ask that you bow your heads and say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask that you come into my life. Father, I need you to rest, to rest rule, rule, and abide. And abide. Lord, God, I can't Lord God, I can't make it without you. Make it without you. Lord, God, this pain Lord God, this pain is too much for me to bear. Me to bear. Lord God, I can't. Lord God, I can't live this life without you. Live this life without you. Father, fill me, Father, fill me with, your Holy Ghost. with your Holy Ghost. Father, lead me, Father, lead me in, this in this life that I live. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. God has so much more for you. Hallelujah. 
He has so much more for you. you. And that is that dunamis power that Pastor Fent was talking about on today. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that as you leave this service on today, if you are not filled, that you would sincerely seek God to fill you with his precious gift. And you will see it by the evidence of speaking in tongues, just as they did so many years ago in Acts. God can do it for you. And I know without a doubt he can do it for you because he did it for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray, hallelujah, that at your first opportunity, if you have not gone down in the baptismal waters, hallelujah, of the blood of Jesus, I pray that you would go down in those waters in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God wants you, hallelujah, to be in relationship with him. He's calling, hallelujah. He's calling, hallelujah. He is calling, hallelujah. Will you answer on today in the name of Jesus? I know he's talking to someone. I know he is. And in traditional church, we would say, come forward, hallelujah, for prayer. This is not traditional church. So as a result, we've got to grow up. We've got to grow up. And as my mom used to say when I was younger, every tub has to stand on its own bottom. You can't go into a physical sanctuary today and walk forward to the altar and have hands laid on you. Hallelujah. But you got an almighty God who hears. You got an almighty God who sees. You got an almighty God who is there with you even now. Hallelujah. And if you would just lift your hands and sincerely ask him, hallelujah, to help you. Thank you he will do it on today. Thank hallelujah. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hope and I pray, hallelujah, that whoever God is speaking to, that you would listen and that you would answer the call. Thank you, Jesus. We ask that if anyone would like to join Sound Word Worship Center, send us an email, info at soundwordworshipcenter.com. We would love to have you come aboard. Pastor Carr used to say, come along with us. We'll do you good. Hallelujah. We're a brand new ministry, but we know God. Hallelujah. And if you come along with us in this boat, we will do you good. Thank you, Jesus. I ask that if this ministry has been a blessing to you, that you would give. We have a website, www.soundwordworshipcenter.com. There's the ability to give online. We're up with the times. We use Givelify as our platform. Press that green button that's on our website and the money comes directly to Sound Word Worship Center. And trust that it goes for a good purpose because we want to further the name of the Lord, hallelujah, throughout this earth in the name of Jesus as he equips us to do so. And your giving helps us to do that purpose. I thank you for joining us on today. Father, I ask that you would bless everyone that joined this service on today. I pray, Lord God, that you would minister even as we walk away from this service, Lord God. Continue to minister. Father, I pray that those seeds that have been planted will be watered, God, and you bring about the increase, the increase of salvation, the increase of peace, the increase of hope, the increase of love. God, I thank you and I praise you for your faithfulness in our lives. In Jesus' name, go and be blessed. Hallelujah.